Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're into lab six still. This is the experimental portion of the lab. Uh, I had left up this slide over here. Uh, just, uh, it'll be in your video, so you'll be able to see it if you wanna go flipping back. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna be looking at this equation right here. We're gonna look at the acceleration and we're gonna do two experiments. One, we're gonna keep the force constant and then we're gonna me measure, uh, we're gonna change the mass. So the independent variable will be the mass. Then we're gonna keep the mass constant and we're gonna measure the, uh, change the force, but each time we're gonna measure the acceleration. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to where we have it set up. And this is a pretty interesting little device right here. This is uh, what's called the Atwood machine. It's just the two pulleys right here. And you need some good string for it. And so the string is right here. Uh, put two nice little loops, and then it hooks right on this um, precision mass set. So the precision mass set, I'll bring it over so you can see it. And these masses are good to a tenth of a gram. So this is a 20 gram mass, but in your data table, you'd put 20.0. And this is a five gram mass pan. Uh, by the way, you don't have to put all those details in your materials. You can just say that we are using a precision mass set, okay? And this is called the Atwood machine right here. And you have to screw the photo gate in between one of the pulleys and the bar that connects the two pulleys together. And then there's a little screw right here and you adjust that so the two pulleys are running along the same direction, okay, like that. All right, and there's a clamp right here to hold it. Then this is a ring stand bar, and then this is a table clamp down here. All right, and that's it. You, you don't need to make any measurements in this experiment because we can set the photo gate for, um, for a, a pulley, a smart pulley, and it knows for this particular pulley, this is made by PASCO, so it knows what the distance is where it's making the measurements. So these little spokes here, when they block the beam, uh, it's all programmed into the uh, timer that it's hitting that one spot and there's that certain flag at that one spot. And there's 10 different spokes, 36 degrees per spoke. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and set it all up so you can see that. So again, it's plugged into port A. This is called an RCA jack right here. See, it's like a microphone, microphone jack for a big microphone, like if you're in a band and you're gonna set up your microphones. That's an RCA jack. Okay, and then you go over here and we plugged it into port one. So we click on that and we pick Photogate. And right here it says Photogate with pulley. So you can just click on that all right, then you go into the timer setup. All right, and we don't want to block. We don't want position. We don't want, we want speed. Uh, we don't want the acceleration. And we don't want angle. We don't want angular speed. So you can see it does a lot of cool stuff, but we don't want it. Now down here it knows exactly. You see, 36 degrees. So I didn't even have to type that in. But I pick what particular quantity I want to measure. Now we're after acceleration, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the speed, and then we're gonna get the slope of the line to get the acceleration. It'll give, her, give us a better value, all right? And then you just push save down here, and then close it up, all right? And now we need a, we need a graph. So you go up here, double click on graph, and there's a graph, and now you just go over to the y-axis and pick your linear speed. All right, so we got speed there. Time automatically goes right there. And then you can see up here, we pick an equation to fit our graph. And so we want a linear equation, which is right up here at the top. All right, and all we need is the slope of the line. Okay, so we're, we're pretty much ready to go. So we're gonna go back and show you what we have right here. So we'll use, just to make this dramatic, we will use a difference in mass of 50 grams, okay? So we could start off with, uh, there's 10, 20 grams here, and there's 20 grams there. So we'll make the heavy side over on this side since I'm close to the computer there. So this side is 
more massive now by 50 grams. So that's the net force in the system. Okay, does that make sense? So remember, with this thing off, it just sits there. So there's no net force. Because the weight on this side, pulling down this axis, we'll call that the positive axis on the, in this case, is equal and opposite the force on the other side. So in the tug of war, they're matched. So nobody's moving. So when I put this on here, then you see when I let go of it, it's gonna accelerate. Now, 50 grams is a lot, okay? So it's going to really accelerate because I have very little mass in the system. So I'm just gonna hold this right here and I'm gonna push uh, collect. All right, good. Now let me stop it. And you can see uh, that the line right there is the speed speeding up and then it goes ah, because I caught it. All right, so but we don't want the equation of this data. We just want the equation of this line right here. So when you have a really quick situation like that, um, you, you probably have to put a bubble box. So you see this guy right here. I click on that and I get this bubble box. And the reason why it's called a bubble box is because there's bubbles on the corners. And so you can change the size. So all you do is you open it up. Uh, it's, come on. So open, ooh, I don't have my mouse. I'm using the mouse pad. Hang on one second. So I'm gonna push down, pull, all right, and then get the data. All right, so you can see it's 4.44 meters per second squared. Isn't that cool? And if you want a little bit more data, you can pull it up, get a little bit more like that. Okay, and 4.43. So that is it. So you collect that, now you go do your next measurement. Now remember, you have to keep 50 grams the same. So now I've got 200 grams, and I'm gonna put it both on, on uh, one on each side. So now I've increased the mass. Now the mass is the total mass. So this is 20, 120, 125. There's 125 over here, which is 250 plus 50 more, 300 grams. So I have 300 grams. And then you could be asking yourself, what do you think is gonna happen to the acceleration now when I let that thing go? And uh, so I'm setting it up and I put little loops in the string so if they come apart. But when you're working with your lab partner, you definitely want to be coordinated so somebody catches everything because you don't want to crash into the floor. And it's good, you can start all the way up here at the top. So it's got a lot of travel time before it gets to the bottom. And I basically just go ahead and just catch it with my hand. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do one more run. All right, that's it, and I'm push stop. Now you can see in the beginning of the run there, I didn't let go of it very well. Uh, so I'm gonna pick the bubble, and I'm not gonna include that first data point. That's kind of nasty. So there's my bubble box. Pull it back, and you can see all that data in there is really good. And so look, look at the slope, 1.48. 1.48, okay? So that's how you do the mass part. You change the mass. Whoa! Uh, change the mass and then uh, you keep the force constant. So the difference on the two sides was 50 grams. That might be, you don't need to use so much mass. You could use like 30. I would not go down to like 5 or 10 because there is some kind of systematic error in this thing. I don't like to give too much away because you can easily figure it out yourself uh, that would make using such a low mass uh, not so advantageous. Now the second part of the experiment is a little bit trickier. So what you have to do for the second part is you keep the total mass constant. So right now remember we had 300 grams, 300 grams. And what we're gonna do is, you could start off like this. So I put all the mass on one side. And by the way, I'm not gonna collect any data because I'm gonna leave that for you guys to do, but I'll describe what I'm doing here. So here is, um, here's a five gram mass pan. 
Okay, so I, let's just say I've got 300 grams here. So that means I've got 295 grams over on this side. Now, I would actually not do this particular run. It's just a little bit too extreme. But anyway, you can see, there's basically nothing. Now I got 300 grams. So I go ahead and I do it, all right? Uh, it still looks like it might work. See, it's really hard to let go when the mass is so big. Here, let me try it. Okay, so you see, you could get some data. You could get some data and see how it works. You're not gonna get too much data, but you're gonna get some data uh, when you do that. All right, so what do you do next? Well, you take off some mass. Now remember, you need about eight measurements, at least eight. So when you're doing the lab, you need at least eight measurements. And I'm gonna put this over here. And you gotta make, so this is, um, so then you gotta keep track of how much mass is on each side. So remember, I had five grams on the, on the uh, M2 side. Now I've got 105 grams. And then over here, I've got, remember it was 300 total, so I have 195 grams over on the other side. And then set it up. Uh, the, the, this experiment here has got a lot of mass in it, so it, it's easy for it to leave the pulley. Okay, so let me bring it back to the top. All right, so now I just got a new situation. See, I've got more net force now. And because before I had the biggest net force. Remember, it was, it was like 195 and five. So now the net force is less, and I can let go of it and then collect that data. You can see you don't need very much data. So if you just kind of go like that, oops, I screwed up a little bit. But anyway, you go like that to collect the data and then take eight more measurements. You should be able to easily get two experiments done because everything's gonna be set up. Everything's gonna be set up and all you have to do is get things going. Hook your computer up and collect the data. And I don't think there's anything else I need to say. I think that's it. Now remember, when you write your procedures, you have to follow the procedures as though you set it up. So you need to go back, who's ever doing the procedures, I would definitely look at the video again and take some good notes so you can describe how you did the experiment. Because we're really uh, short on time, so we have to set everything up for you. All right, so that's the end of experiment number six the good old Atwood's tug-of-war machine. And uh, on that, I wish you well, Godspeed, stay healthy, and we'll see you next week. Bye.